Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our program today. We hope that you have a wonderful sitting with us as we explore the topic all about religious liberty, a musical celebration. We know that many of you are watching from around the world, so we welcome you from whichever country you are watching us from. We hope you have a happy Sabbath as we worship together this evening. And so what I want to encourage you to do is that you can type in the chat, um, send some love, send some blessings, tell us where you're from and how you're enjoying the program. Um, so if you really, really enjoy the program, we just want to encourage you to place that in the chat and let us know how well we are doing. Before we go any further in our program, let's now bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for this Holy Sabbath day where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we are coming to celebrate the freedom to worship. And so, God, we thank you for the opportunities that we still have to worship you openly and worship you in the way that we are supposed to worship you. Father, I ask that you will bless this program. May it be a blessing to all those who are watching it and who are listening to it. This is my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
is a big deal. I say that a lot because it is. You see, people over the years have suffered for religious liberty. People have died for religious liberty. As a matter of fact, even now, while we enjoy relative comfort and, and religious rights and freedoms here in Barbados, there are people all over the world that are still suffering and dying for religious liberty. God has given us the right to choose to worship, to choose not to worship. But the important thing is, He's given us the right to worship as we see things. And that's what we're celebrating this evening. There's some fabulous singers, some fabulous musicians, all of them coming together, giving glory to God and telling us that religious liberty is not just any old thing. It's a big deal. And go home to my Lord and be free. from home your neighbor is not just the one who does reside next door a friend will stick much closer and will help you to endure it's all about freedom it's all about love it's all about liberty and it comes from God I will comfort you when against the wall I will stay with you when your heavens fall It's all about freedom It's all about love Chains are from the enemy He wants to hold you back He can't decide your future Once the Lord is on your track You will receive the victory with bruises never mind A God gives full assurance He's alive and comes in time Cause it's all about freedom It's all about love It's all about liberty And it comes from God I will comfort you when against the wall I will stay with you though your heavens fall it's all about freedom, it's all about love. Man to man is so unjust, our hearts are filled with pride. To think that we are better than those on the other side. Oppression God will surely judge, the trodden he will see. Weeping may last for a night, but in the morning you'll be free. Cause it's all about freedom, it's all about love. It's all about liberty, and it comes from God. I will comfort you when against the wall. I will stay with you though your heavens fall. It's all about freedom. It's all about love, it's all about freedom, it's all about love, it's all about liberty, and it comes from God. I will comfort you when against the wall, I will stay with you though your heavens fall. It's all about freedom, it's all about love. It's all about freedom, it's all about love, it's all about liberty, and it comes from God. I will comfort you when against the wall, I will stay with you though the heavens fall. It's all about freedom, it's all about love, it's all about freedom. It's all about love, it's all about freedom, 
It's all about love. On May 13, 1986, National Hero of Barbados, the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow, asked the people a question. What kind of mirror image do you have of yourself? I'd like to ask that question too, today. When you think of hero, do you think of great men like him? Do you picture towering, charismatic, larger than life figures that do magnificent deeds? Champions of the people? Famous names that go down in history for what they have done? Or perhaps those that rush into a surging sea, a crashed car, or a burning building to rescue those who are caught in trouble? The key to heroism is to act to help other people in need, having a concern to protect, defend, and champion a moral cause for the common good, knowing there is a personal risk done without expectation of reward. In a moment of heroism, when someone is needed to take action, who the hero is inside pours out. Have you ever looked into the mirror and pictured yourself as the hero? Christians are God's representatives, signs and symbols of God's character, of exactly who he is. Our purpose is to testify to the good reputation, the right image of God, that God is just, God is good, and God is love. Jesus commissioned all his disciples to be witnesses and signs of his presence until the end of time. His Holy Spirit reproduces Christ's character, he who was the express image of God in his followers. Their witness is borne out by the visible signs of Christ's character, the fruit of his Holy Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Why do we champion religious freedom? We do so because God champions religious freedom. Christ championed religious freedom. The heart of the covenant is to love God with all our heart, all our soul, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Freedom of conscience, given and guaranteed by God for love, must be championed for all. By their wisdom and justice, by the purity and well-doing of their daily life, by their devotion to God and the best interests of the people who were idolaters, who didn't believe as they did. Joseph and Daniel, heroes, proved themselves true to him whose representatives they were. Both in Egypt and in Babylon, the whole nation honored these men, and in them, a heathen people and all the nations with which they were connected beheld an illustration of the goodness and beneficence of God an illustration of the love of Christ. The greatest want of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is as true to duty as a needle to the pole, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. We are made in the image of God. And how we relate to others must mirror him, acting for the benefit of others and promoting their good, even at our own loss. Some heroes' names will be remembered in the pages of history. All true heroes of faith will forever be recorded in the Lamb's look book of life. When the moment calls, when the situation squeezes, what will pour out of me? Who knows whether you've been put in position in the kingdom of God for such a time as this, will you be a hero of liberty? We must never forget those who paved the way for liberty today. We must never forget those who stood for truth, whatever came their way. We must 
never forget those who sacrificed their lives all for the cause of Jesus Christ. We're surrounded by Good evening, everyone. Freedom to worship is a God-given right that every human being ought to have the ability to exercise. It is so important because God wants each of us to worship Him not by coercion or by force, but to choose to worship Him because of love. Love that is coerced isn't love, and therefore worship that is coerced isn't true worship. The ability to worship is so vitally important that even in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, it is stated that we have the, we should we ought to have the ability to worship even by ourselves. Not in concert with, uh, and in concert with others, of course, but we should hold our, our ability to worship for ourselves. 
when we think back to the three Hebrew boys who made the decision to worship God come what, come what may what, what that shows us is that even in the face of overwhelming odds we ought to hold our relationship with God uh, clearly but not just us other people who may not look like us who may not worship like us or may not worship at all God has given them the right to choose to worship in the way that they do in essence God has given us the right to be wrong yes there will be consequences but he has given us the right to be wrong so let's celebrate our freedom of worship let us not take it for granted because in other parts of the world there are persons who do not have this opportunity let us use it to for the furtherance of God's kingdom that his will be done and that he can come soon our freedom of worship gives us this opportunity to spread his gospel let us not squander this opportunity folks let us do as God has allowed us and he, as he has commanded us thank you and have a wonderful day
The Road to Freedom. The road to freedom is hard and long. Those who endure must be courageously strong. The choices we make between right and wrong will determine our view of freedom. Enslaved people everywhere really want to be free. They want to be emancipated from mental slavery. Helpless captives who are searching for liberty will yearn for the privileges of freedom. The humble and free has no need to fear. What a fine example of our father's care. Accepted and loved, nothing can compare. Forgiven and basking in freedom. Our great liberator had a master plan, a ransom he paid for the freedom of man. He set the captives free like no other can. He died for our blood-bought freedom. He proclaimed liberty to mind, body, and soul. To redeem the lost, that was his true goal. He rescued the downtrodden from the tempter's hand. So let us cherish his supreme freedom. Fix your mind on good thoughts. Think heavenly things. Let the Lord bear you up on eagle's wings. Keep a song in your heart and with victory sing. We are bound for the land of freedom. I'm
It is a known fact that religious liberty is under challenge all around the world today. And a crucial aspect of us representing Jesus Christ and standing up for the freedoms which are protected not only by, by law, but really are given to us by God himself, is that we must be courageous people. And courage does not mean simply being presumptuous or, as we say in Barbados, taking every fight that comes to us. But certainly what it does mean is to realize that when religious rights are really under challenge, religious rights that are biblically based, religious rights that we have um, given to us by God, and when our religious rights become conflicted because the commands of men are in direct conflict with the commands of God, based on scripture, based on spirit of prophecy, based on the clear that saith the Lord. We have a responsibility to stand up and say no. A time will come when, like Daniel, we are asked to stop worshipping as we understand worship, as we know worship to be directed towards the true and living God. And in his case, Daniel defied even the order of the king, where he declared that even though the lions would be loose, he will still pray to God three times a day. Shadrach, Bishak, and Abednego went into the burning fiery furnace in order to stand up for what they knew was right, not bowing down to golden images and idols in defiance of, of the king of the day. And then also the Hebrew boys, when they first arrived in Babylon, defied the order of the king to eat certain things. Well, wherever scripture is clear, wherever the word of God is certain, and wherever there's a principle involved in doing what God says rather than what man says, the church should stand up. We must be discerning to know the difference between just being provocative in our attitudes and standing up for what really matters. I invite you therefore to study carefully religious liberty and the idea that we must be courageous for Jesus Christ. These times that are ahead of us will require people to know the word, to know their God, and to know what he requires. Courage is something that is not just developed overnight. It comes through the crucible of affliction and it is developed in the furnaces of trial. So at your workplace and at your school, when you are challenged to do that which is not right, stand up, develop some spiritual muscle. And as you grow from day to day, God will bring more and more experiences into your life that will help you to nurture that spirit of courage. And at the right place, at the right time, when Christ is about to come, and our faith and our religious freedom will become more and more challenged, that will be the time when we really need to stand up. Courage is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Forever present for
forever faithful, forever good, Good evening. What is the meaning of justice? The book of Micah chapter 6 verses 6 to 8 reads thus. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and how and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil shall I give my firstborn for my transgression and the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul he hath showed thee O man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before thy God I want to submit to you that justice is the litmus test for true religion. It has nothing to do with punishment, judgment, or imposing sanctions. It is about allowing our religious beliefs, whatever they are or not, to evolve and mature from a mere abstraction to a practical way of living that benefits and is a blessing to our fellow man. In this scheme of things, theology, theology, tradition, and denomination denominational dogma take a very second very distant second, third, and fourth place.
Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough. And tell me what do you say when your friends turn away and you're, you're all alone, alone. Tell me what do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile while your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain? Tell me what? do you give when you've given your all and it seems like it's never enough well you just stand when there's nothing left to do you just stand watch the Lord see you through yes after you've done all you can, you just stand, you can to be sure, be not entangled in that bondage again, you just stand, stand and endure, for God has a purpose, yes, God has a plan when you've done all you can and it seems like you can live.
Now, we have a responsibility to advocate for our religious liberty continuously, even for those we strongly disagree with. And when we see actions of religious intolerance creeping into our church, into our nation, into our virtual community, we can say something. When we see something, we say something. Now, as I prepared this, I realized I haven't always done that. You know, sometimes I realize that if we quietly stand by and allow religious liberties to be eroded, the life we think is normal and modern could cease to exist for some. Maybe it will be for us or maybe it won't, but for some, they don't have the same freedoms and acceptance and tolerance that we thought or we think is normal. So maybe not us as individuals, but for others because we're our brother's keeper. So keep a brother and a sister, advocate for their rights, and may everyone know that we are Christians by our love.
Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights clearly state that, and I quote, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, and freedom of religion. From the above statement, it is crystal clear that personal choices must be devoid of intimidation, devoid of victimization, devoid of coercion, of coercion and persecution. Any of the above is inflicted upon any person whose personal choice differ is a violation of their God-given right to freely choose their belief system. It therefore means that for personal choice to be implemented and to succeed, tolerance is necessary. We must understand that there will be persons who think, act, and worship differently. They will choose differently, but it is important that that choice be respected as stated above. Even for a religious organization to take action because a member chooses to be different on an issue, if that person is punished because their choices differ, in some instances it can be deemed as a violation of their freedom of choice. Personal choices separate us from being robots and guarantees us an intellectual autonomy. Remember that God says, even God says, if you are willing, we must understand that willpower in a human being is the deciding power. Freedom of choice also carries a responsibility to respect the philosophy goals, tenets of any organization that we may belong to. Just as freedom of speech does not give the one the right to shout fire in a room where there is no fire, freedom of, fire, freedom of choice does not give us the right to share our views in an organization that sees things different than us. If God above allows us to think and choose freely, who is man to deny us these precious God-given rights?
No, I don't have to look across the ages. His voice is speaking in my heart today. His word is like a flame, consuming all my shame. His life is shining star to light the way. So I will follow Christ. Religious liberty is about faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This passage is more than just a definition. It tells us what faith does, and the rest of the chapter gives us some solid examples. Now faith promise it provides substance. The Greek word is hypostasis. This word refers to an assurance, a future hope of things yet to come. We are assured of a future hope that God promises us. Deliverance, justice, happiness, heaven, and eternal life. Faith also provides evidence. The Greek word for evidence is illegos, something like that. <laughs> this refers to evidence or proof that leads to conviction in a, like in a legal case. This, prefers, this refers to the present realities that are unseen. So faith provides us evidence and assurance. Now, let's go into these examples. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Abel was the first martyr. He died because of how he chose to worship. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Enoch chose to be different. He chose to walk with God when it wasn't popular to do that. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear. Noah was the first evangelist. He shared an entire message that was out of step with his time, but he persevered. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. 
Abraham spurned his family's religion and followed his conscience. He experienced a total paradigm shift of worship, not just the style, but the location. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Sarah was free not to believe until she was satisfied that she had the evidence. And, you know, Hebrews also mentions the patriarchs, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. They shared their legacy of faith with their children. These guys weren't perfect, but they were steadfast in their belief. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses turned his back on the state religion to follow God. He would rather be a child of God than the son of a, a God. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Rahab chose to change her religion in her best interest as well. <laughs> now, Paul didn't mention these people by accident. When we look at their examples through the lens of religious liberty, we can learn a lot from them and we can build our Christian experience. The need for religious liberty cannot be satisfied without faith. By faith, we are assured of the forgiveness of sins and the deliverance from evil actors and injustice in this present world. By faith, we are assured of a life beyond this life as well. Our minds are directed to a time when we will be free of pain and all other ills of this life. No death, no sickness, no suffering. We will be at rest and free for all eternity. And it's all about faith. Now, religious liberty is about faith in a God who is our protector, our provider, our redeemer, and our friend. Because we have faith, we obey him. Because we have faith, we try to reflect his character. And when we reflect his character, we seek to defend those who are defenseless. When we, when we seek to reflect his character, we respect those around us, even if they don't agree with them, if you don't agree with them. When we reflect his character, we, try, we find ways to reach out to others. We have faith in a God who has a track record of making a way for his people. Hebrews reminds us of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the other prophets. This is a magnificent list. Not because these guys were perfect, you know, but because every one of these people had a glaring issue. Despite their issues, God made a way. Today on Religious Liberty, we are celebrating freedom of worship. We're celebrating our rights and privileges as people of faith. But please don't forget that this, is free, that this freedom is fleeting. It won't last forever. Don't forget that we stand on the shoulders of brave men and women who bled, wept and died for the freedoms that we enjoy. Through today. them, God made a way. And we can be assured that when our time comes, God will make a way. Because to God, religious liberty is a big deal. God bless you. Everything we need you supply 
See you. 
Good evening once again, and we hope that you would have had a wonderful sitting and that the program was a blessing for you. At this point in time, I want to acknowledge the presence of our pastor, Pastor Shane Butcher, as well as the president of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, President R. Danforth Francis. We hope that you had a wonderful sitting with us and that the program was inspiring and enjoyable. At this point in time, we will have our closing prayer. Our kind and most heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the wonderful pieces, the music, and the ministry, the poems, and the speeches that were given. Father, I ask that you will bless all of us that you will touch our lives, that you will help us to realize that this religious liberty is precious and that it may soon be gone. Father, I thank you for this message. And as we leave this meeting, I ask that you will encourage us, inspire us to not only live what we have heard today, but we will share the message of God's love with everyone we come into contact with. May we have a blessed week as we go to our various places of work. I ask the Father that our influence will spread far and wide. This is my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so thank you once again for joining us for this special program. And we do hope that you have a wonderful week.